Welcome back to another DC Recap. I have quite a bit to cover in this video, so you're going to want to stick around, especially if you're anyone who has purchased any digital media content lately, or are a fan of owning physical media. The first thing I want to talk about is Netflix and Max. It seems like everyone interested in comic book movie news these days is talking about whether or not Netflix is interested in acquiring the rights to what we have all come to know as the Snyderverse. So Zack can finish what he started some 10 or so years ago. Well, of course they're interested. The thing is that it's just not that easy. You see, WB owns the IP rights to everything DC related. And they're not just going to hand over these rights to Netflix willy-nilly that damn easy. Now, can they? Well, of course they can. Will they? Many hope so, including myself, but no one knows. Let me repeat that no one knows. Although, there are many out there that assume that they know. But, here's what's rubbing me in about 15 different directions with all of this. WB is letting Netflix stream a lot of DC Snyder related material this month. We all know that. I'll buy it, not the granddaddy of them all, Zack Snyder's Justice League, at least not yet. And that's because it still pulls in a lot of views for WB over on Max. But, and here's what I find interesting. They are working together just the same so they can both profit from the material. Also, for any of you that currently use Verizon for your cell service, then you may or may not know that they're offering a bundle this month where you can get both Max and Netflix Add supported versions for only 10 bucks a month, which I might add is a pretty good deal. Now, I'm, I'm not supporting Verizon. I'm just letting you know. Now, one would think that they would both have to agree to this. So, once again, they are working together this time to tally up more subscriptions and to profit from the material. I stated in my last two shows that I think Zach dropped some pretty big hints, whereas he would like to continue making CBMs, but just not for WB in the current DC regime. And now we have both Max and Netflix coming to agreements, and for what? Once again, so they can both gain more subscriptions and more profit. Capiche? And so I ask you, my friends, could this be the start of something? Could this be the proverbial olive branch that might lead to Zach's work being finished someday? Yeah, I know. Some may watch this and say I'm simply riding on the old Snyder Bro cult train and I just won't let it go. And while that's partially true, I admit that. Sure, I would like to see his films finalized, but I'm also a realist and I realize in the end that the chance of that ever happening is very, very slim. There's a lot that goes into letting it come to fruition, but hey, one can hope, can't one? For me anyways, I find the slightest possibility of it ever happening far more enticing and or exciting than what's brewing over at DC these days. It's no big secret that I don't care for James Gunn's style and the way he makes films, not to mention that I find him rather narcissistic. I think Superman Legacy may just turn out to be a mess. I can't stand Peacemaker, I don't care about Creature Commandos, and his footprint on the last few DCEU movies ruined what could have been a better way to send them out in a positive way instead of a jumbled mess. And I'm sorry, I still believe he had something to do with it. Think what you will. Now, don't confuse what I said as to mean that I wish that he fails, because I don't. I just don't care for his work. And, with that said, I have a few random DC and WB tidbits that I think you will find rather interesting. David Ayer, a.k.a. he who does his own hype, a.k.a. the director of the best version of the Suicide Squad, I might add, did a piece for Total Film where he says that he believes his director's cut version of said film could just see, just might, see the light of day. He says that he believes that it will be made public one day and that he's very optimistic. He said it's coming. Something's going to happen. And something is going to be revealed. The truth comes out, it always comes out. Now, just exactly how Mr. Ayer knows any of this? Well, that is the one thing that he didn't say. Who knows, maybe he knows something that little Jimmy Gunn doesn't know his own self. And speaking of James Gunn, this picture popped up earlier. Apparently, it's of Gunn and his posse scouting shooting sites for Superman Legacy. And I don't know why, but for some reason, when I saw it, <laughs> this picture reminds me of this one. I'm sorry, call me crazy. Now, something that I led up to at the start of the show. 
If you or anybody you know has purchased any digital media in the past, you may find this, well, rather interesting, to say the least. Via a story from Forbes, it seems that over at Sony, makers of the PlayStation, they have announced that some digital media that was being purchased via the PlayStation will be deleted from their libraries. That's right. You heard that right. Deleted from their libraries permanently. Shows that you once paid hard-earned money for, that you were under the assumption that you truly actually owned. Well, they will poof, be gone, never to return. And here's the kicker. Now, what is the product that they purchased, you might ask? What did they get hosed on? Well, Discovery TV shows. That's what, yes, Discovery TV shows that are owned by none other than good old WB themselves, who, we all know, was recently merged with Discovery and HBO Max. Now, what this all means is, in the end, any digital content that you may happen to purchase via, say, the Sony PlayStation or a streamer like Prime, Google Play, or Vudu, well, it means that you don't really own any of it. And if any one of those sites loses the digital rights to the product that they sold you or maybe goes out of business and folds up, well, you just might lose the right to watch them in the end your own self. Unless, of course, you go and purchase another digital copy someplace else. And this, my friends, is why I always find a way to purchase physical media, be it a Blu-ray, a DVD, and if we're talking about music an album or a CD. Most people these days simply love the freedom of just turning on the TV and finding what they want to watch or listen to with just a few clicks or telling Alexa to do it. And I do get that. And I do it myself. But until they give you the ability to download the content and have a physical copy of it permanently, then I just don't think that it's worth the risk. I buy hard copies of everything that I like. Hell, I enjoy the entire process. Reading the sleeves, jackets, hell, they look, looking at the thing and checking out the extras. And when it comes to music, well, I'm old school. And there simply ain't nothing like opening up a brand new album for the first time, getting that new vinyl smell, reading the liner notes and whatnot, staring at it all over and over again while it's playing. It's just, well, cool. Nothing beats the sound of music playing on a turntable, my friends. Nothing. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Now, I ain't trying to tell you what to do here. I'm just politely suggesting, whenever possible, you might want to pick yourself up a physical copy of those movies you love to watch and or TV shows. At least you will always have access to it. And... With all that said, let me know what you think about what we've covered today. I would like to know how you know, feel about, you know, the Netflix buddy, buddy thing that's going on. Am I the only one that thinks these things? Do you think David Ayer will ever get his director's cut released? Or do you even care at this point? And least, but certainly not last, or last but certainly not least, how do you feel about buying digital media only to have it taken away from you with no questions asked? I'd like to know your thoughts, so if you would like to, please feel free to post them down below. If you would go ahead and subscribe and hit that like button, and don't forget to click that red bell so you'll be notified of the next show, so you don't miss anything else in the future. The YouTube algorithm uses that info in order to rank content, and that's how you get the videos. And as always, thank you for hanging out with me. God bless. Socks out.